hello everyone welcome to our channel whales and tales and this is the last part of this chapter fourth in this chapter we are going to talk about majorly we are going to talk about rare rock what is rare rock we will dissect this rare rock into what is risk what is risk adjusted return and that how it plays with the capital so when what is the difference i'm not going to talk about what is the difference of return on equity and uh, rare rock but by covering rare rock uh, we will definitely have a more or better understanding on how it, it differs from return on equity there are slight uh, boring topics also so we'll cover those in this video and in next video i'm going to cover some slightly some over complicated things without further delay let's start so there is a classical financial advice which suggests that the corporation should engage in a a business activities only if the expected return is if the expected return is higher than the minimum return uh, expected return is higher than the minimum return minimum uh, return and uh, minimum return by minimum return what we, what i meant minimum return required by the well diversified shareholders so this is a classic finance theory these are investors with their assets spread across various investment and uh, they can tolerate the failure of few individual investment without suffering substantial losses so that's where this well diversified shareholder well diversified um, portfolio comes in the picture but blindly following the advice might lead to the corporation to take unduly high risk where we are just focusing on expected return more than minimum return so increasing the corporation capital base we there is a term like there is a term recapitalization which suggests that to absorb the increased risk uh, corporates can go for recapitalization failing to recapitalize could heighten the risk of bankruptcy also so but at the same time there are regulatory requirements also where banks are subject to strict regul where banks are subject to strict regulation they are mandated to maintain risk levels with their current capitalization and ensuring they have enough equity to absorb losses and uh, at conservatively estimated levels banks therefore operate within a limited risk capacity every risk transaction they undertake consumes some portion of their limited capacity so to ensure prudent use of their uh, limited risk capacity banks impose a cost on risk and each transaction not only needs to meet the minimum return required by shareholder but also cover additional costs associated with the inherent risk so for both corporation as well as for banks there is a constant need to balance risk and return uh, we have already covered in detail what is risk and return how how to do the balancing of risk and return and however but however banks operate in a more regulated environment with a heightened focus on risk management due to their systematic importance so banks must carefully evaluate and price risk in every transaction this influences their this influences their strategic decision making impacting the types of transaction they engage in and return they seek regulatory compliance is paramount of concern for banks so they must ensure that this aligns the risk taking aligns with the regulatory requirements and failure to do so could cause several consequences also so while classical finance advice may give uh, may guide corporation to seek return exceeding minimum requirements however in case of banks they are bound by the regulation which must navigate a more constrained landscape so the cost of risk becomes a critical factor in their decision making ensuring the risk is prudently managed and aligned with the regulatory standard so let's cover this in classic finance theory corporations were advised to undertake a business activity as long as their expected return exceeded the minimum return required by the well diversified shareholders a well diversified shareholder has assets spread across a large group of different investments and would typically not suffer substantial losses if one or few of the individual investment failed if corporation followed this advice blindly they may find themselves taking unduly high risk so the situation may that would be remedied by recapitalizing the corporation to absorb the increased risk and whereas failing to recapitalize the corporation would uh, increase their risk of bankruptcy also so bank could afford cannot afford to follow the classical finance advice so what in their case since they are required by the regulation to maintain risk levels within their current current capitalization they must have enough equity to sustain losses at conservatively estimated levels because of this every risk transaction the bank enters uses the sum of the bank's limited risk capacity in order to ensure that the limited risk capacity is used wisely banks put a cost on the risk each transaction must earn not only the minimum return required by the shareholder but also an additional return due to the expense of risk next topic is the risk and return 
their financial instruments such as financial before uh, discussing this there is a general discussion let's do general discussion financial instruments such as stock bonds and derivatives carry various types of risk these includes market risk market risk is fluctuation in the price of um, all those factors influencing market credit risk risk of default liquidity risk default difficulty in buying or selling and more so financial instruments such as stock bonds derivative carry various types of risk it can be market risk credit risk liquidity risk etc 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 risk can be quantified using matrix like standard deviation or beta what is standard deviation what is beta we can we can uh, let's see whether there is a need to talk about standard deviation or beta i am quite sure there is a market risk module and that module we can cover in more detail what is standard, standard deviation beta in their calculation but not in this chapter asset liability management so risk can be quantified using matrix like standard deviation beta which indicate the instrument volatility or sensitivity of the market movements higher risk often correlates with a potential for with a potential for the higher returns also so higher risk higher return okay fine investors often reduce risk by diversifying their portfolio a general uh, a classic suggestion of risk minimization is the diversification risk mitigation is diversification hold what is diversification holding a mix of different types of instruments and how it impacts it helps spread risk and lower the impact of poor performing assets what is expected return what is expected return return ex represent the potential gain or losses an investor can expect from a financial instrument so it is typically expressed as a percentage and different instrument offer differing varying different returns also and what cover the components of return return can come from multiple sources including capital gain what is capital gain the change in the instrument price income such as dividend or interest income coupon payment so risk return trade off there is a fundamental trade off between the risk and the return investment with higher risk generally offer the potential for higher returns also but they also have carry greater chance of losses so conversely conserve conversely low risk investment tend to provide more modest return so it's a choice for us are we going for a modest return or are we going for a high returns but at the same time then we need to take a high risk also the length of time an investor plans to hold an investment to hold an investment can also influence risk and return longer time horizons may follow for greater risk taking for potential higher returns also an individual financial goals and the risk riskier and the risk tolerance plays a very significant role riskier instrument may might align with the aggressive growth objectives while conservative options suit capital preservation goals economic factors like inflation rates and interest rates and in, in both impact these 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 economic factors impact both returns and as well as return for instance higher interest rate can increase return on fixed income investment but may also raise borrowing cost and increase market volatility so market sentiment geopolitical events market cycles affects risk and return also bull markets often offer higher returns whereas bear market tend to carry more risk and the choice of financial instrument also influence the risk return profile for instance high stocks typically offer higher potential returns greater but at the cost of greater volatility compared to the bonds or cash equivalents so understanding the risk return relationship is fundamental in fundamental for what to make in, informed investment decision to make informed investment decision investors must assess their risk tolerance their risk tolerance investment goal and the prevailing economic and market condition when constructing a portfolio and that should align with their financial objectives also so balancing and there is also one more term balancing risk and return is a complex yet very crucial aspect of their investment landscape let's talk about rarock rarock is a financial matrix that helps organization evaluate profitability of specific business activity or investment while taking into account the associated risk while taking into account the associated risk it evaluate the profitability of specific transaction adventure or or business activity or investment what is return return is the money we make from an investment or business activity it's like a profit we earn okay what what is risk adjusted return uh, risk adjusted return because it doesn't just look at the how much money we can make it also looks into considering also it also consider how risky the investment is and risk means there is a chance we might lose some or all of the money so the consideration of risk in the return is risk adjusted portion of redock what is capital capital uh, simple capital is the money we initially invested or the funds we need to support a business activity is a capital 
So if we put all this together, REROC is a special calculator that helps to figure out if the investment or business activity is a good idea or not. It looks at how much profit we expect to take to make and then consider how risky it is. If it is really risky investment, then we might need to make more profit to make it worthwhile. Redoc helps to decide if the potential reward or the return is worth the risk we are taking and if we are using the right amount of money to make the investment or activity happen. So Redoc helps to decide if the potential return is worth the risk we are taking. If the potential return is worth the risk we are taking. This is the most important part. The potential return is worth the risk we are taking. Potential return is worth the risk we are taking. If we are using right amount of capital so by using the right amount of money to make the investment or activity happen is the potential return potential reward is worth the risk we are taking that's all about red rock so and and red rock help us to make smart financial decision by balancing how much money we can make with how much risk we are comfortable with If we are a bank manager and we have to decide whether to lend money or to someone who wants to start a new business, Redoc is a very trusty tool to make sure this lending decision makes financial sense for the bank. We know what is return. This is the money the bank expects to make from the loan or which includes the interest the borrower will pay. It's like profit the bank hopes to earn. This is return. What is risk adjust, adjusted? Rocks takes into account how risky the loan is, how risky the investment is, how risky the um, it activity is. So for instance, lending to an established business might be less risky, while at the same time lending to a startup can be considered as a very risky venture. It's like considering how likely it is that borrower might not be able to repay the loan. Capital in this context means the bank's own money that it uses to fund the loan. Banks have a limited capital and they want to use it wisely so redox help the bank determine if lending money if lending money to this business is a good idea it calculates whether the profit the bank expects to make the, from the loan is worth the risk involved in case the borrower can't repay so if the loan is risky the bank might require a higher return to make up for that risk so bank is going to charge more uh, interest rate if it is less risky, then low rate and low interest rate might be acceptable. And Red Rock ensures that the bank is using its capital efficiently. It helps the bank decide if it should go ahead with a loan or find ways to reduce the risk. Or ask for a higher return. What are the five ways to reduce the risk? Asking for collateral. A good quality collateral. So in the banking world, Red Rock is a vital tool to make sure that the lending decisions are not only about making money, but also about managing risk and using the bank's capacity wisely. It helps banks strike the right balance between the profit and the prudence. So shall we start here? Okay, let's let's start. The most widely used measure for the cost of risk is Redox. One second, friends. The most widely measure of the cost of risk is REROC or the risk adjusted return on capital. This was first developed by the Bankers Trust in the late 1970. On a forward-looking basis, REROC is defined as the following expected profit net of all financing costs divided by value at risk. At Bankers Trust in 1990s, the war was computed as a 99% confidence level for one year and a threshold REROC of 25% was used. So this implies that the, any deal done by the bank have to be expected net profit exceeded 25% of its war. What is REROC? Expected profit divided by value at risk.
and there is one example also bank banker trust has an opportunity to do a securitization deal for a credit card company but has to retain a portion of its residual risk of the deal with an estimated war of usd 10 million so we have a war it fees for the deal are usd 3 million and short term financing cost are 600000 so what is the net earning from the profit it is 2. 4 million 4 million profit what how is 2.4 million 3 minus 0. 0.6 is 2.4 or 24% by rock while the risk charges are USD 2.5 million how we come up with 24% uh, by rock 2.4 divided by 10 is 24% so and 2.4 is in this case it is 2.4 divided by 10 because war is 10 and 2.4 is this thing this and 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 and, and it and this three million okay fine next thing is while the risk charges are usd 2.5 million but should have been at least 5 for 25 percent or profits net to financing of at least 2.5 million then we can say we are at least achieving the 25 percent our uh, here uh, here they want here the company management want that rock should be 25 percent of the war but here the answer here we are what we are having is 24 percent so what they can do they can either uh, profit net of financing should be minimum 2.5 million so the deal will have to be restructured in restructured in such a way to increase the profitability by at least one percent or to reduce the residual risk to at most 9.6 million so either increase the numerator or decrease the denominators as simple so this could be accomplished by raising the fees by raising the fees, hedging the transaction or selling a portion of the residual risk to an, an outsider buyer. The ROC allows an analyst to convert a measure of risk into a measure of cost and converts qualitative trade off between the return and the risk into a quantitative trade off that can be rigorously enforced through a bank. By enforcing this discipline, bank can ensure that each of its department is considering the cost of risk is in exactly the same way that depend deciding how structure how to structure the or uh, and accept transaction within the same risk appetite guidelines in the next video we will talk about red rock for a single transaction and then incremental access regulatory capital charge in red rock this is also very important thing to discuss and 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 and, and if these these topics few of these topics and then finally our chapter will this this may require one or two more video but let, let I, i'm going to talk about this thing this portion this is most boring portion and then the next video we can talk about some interesting eight things to discuss so where we are what we need to talk we need to talk about this thing this thing we we have already covered till till this part and uh, we need to cover war very interesting
capital and leverage constraints as well as and have other more struggled with the historically low levels of property yields on the holding of fixed income assets. So securitization is likely to continue. Appeal the investors class, future basis for regulation are likely therefore to be infinitely infinite infinitely more detailed about the risk and relative various forms of asset securitization. Given the financial interconnectedness of the world, there will be even more time to align bank regulation with insurance regulation and the fund management regulation and may be more time to figures and allow the financial ownership to migrate seamlessly into a Economic growth ought to rely on the access of financing, and the debt financing is a common way for the countries and businesses to fund both of these things. Basel 3, however, set international banking regulation for the stricter capital and leverage requirements on the banks. So, these requirements are destroyed and designed. Sometimes destroyed also. The banks are designed to enhance the stability and independence of the banking sector. Basel 3 requirements regulations limit the capacity of the banks to provide debt financing, so this limitation can have an implication for economic growth. Because economic growth often relies on access, in, of access to financing and the debt financing is a common way for the companies, as we have already covered. 
limitation can have implication over the economic growth if business and innovation limit the capacity of the bank to provide financing. As banks are a primary source of funding for businesses and projects, the bank facing reduced lending capacity due to the regulatory constraints have two strategic options for most. First, raising more capital. Bank can increase the capital basis which allows them to take on more lending without violating the regulatory limits. However, banks can sell existing assets also to pay in capital and security for other investments. So banks have already raised substantial in capital in response to the regulatory requirements, additionally requiring more assets from the other banks. They not be a viable option because of the limited amount of capital in the market. So given these challenges, capital decision become a very popular strategy for the banks to facilitate lending and growth. When securitization involves bulging banks assets, what is called securitization, it involves bulging the bank assets such as loans into securities and selling them to the non-bank financial institution in the best. Successful, can be considered successful securitizing. So, the non banking financial institution like Venture for Insurance Company, Sovereign Wealth Fund have different regulatory constraints compared to the bank, so they may have more capacity to invest in the securitized assets. Securitization provides banks with a way to offload their assets and freeing up their capital for new lending, so the bank, you know, non banking financial institutions are often attracted to securitized assets because they offer the potential for the higher returns compared to the traditional fixed income assets, especially in the loan yield environment. While securitization can help banks. Navigate regulatory constraint, it's the best to realize over the ability to sell the assets to the non bank financial institution. So, this can be the potential in debt equity into the financial systems and support economic growth. So, middle three, in short, regulations have to impose the limit limits on the capacity of the banks to provide debt financing from, from prompting banks to explore right, alternative growth strategies like securitization and securitization, whereas securitization allows banks to bundle and sell assets to the non banking financial institutions, potentially unlocking their capital for the new lending and support economic growth. However, the success of the strategy depends on the market condition and the appetite of the non bank investors for these securitized assets. But this we can end our video. And in the next video, we have covered this portion, we have covered this also, this also, we have covered this, this also. But in the next video, we will talk about this. We will talk about this, these two pages. No, 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 no. This also. two pages so thanks for watching this video take care bye bye